System breach. Oh. Firewall one. We got a problem. What? Someone synced a rat to one of my servers. A remote access tool. We're being hacked. But we've been so careful. How could they find us? They haven't found us yet. Just cracked the outer layer of our system. I'll start an intrusion inspection and find out who our rat is. just happened? Armageddon, I'm afraid. Hi there, welcome to Thomas Game Docs. So today, we're talking Mario Maker, the first game, that is. You see, a while back, a pretty weird discovery was made in the game's files. I should first note that it wasn't me that made this discovery. I am but a humble researcher, I know not of the sacred art of game ripping. No, the credit for this discovery goes to two places, Twitter user NWPlayer123, and also the fine folks at the cutting room floor. If you've never heard of this site before, it essentially keeps track of all the files buried within game's code that never made it into the final experience, instead remaining hidden from view of the player. Now, Mario Maker actually has a whole bunch of unused data in its files. Some of it is clearly a remnant of an earlier version of the game. You see, if you look at Mario Maker's first trailer, shown at E3 2014, you can see that it's gone through a whole lot of changes. The background had a grid pattern, sort of like a bathroom wall. There's also some kind of gradient placed over the screen. If you look closely, you can see that the ground in the middle is much lighter than the ground at the edges. Lastly, all the coins and question mark blocks had this weird shiny look to them. Interesting. Now, between this original trailer and the final game's release, Nintendo changed the Super Mario Bros. theme to look practically the same as the original game. The only difference I can spot is this shadow behind everything, perhaps to help viewers tell the difference between official Nintendo levels and ones made using Mario Maker. Anyway, while this prototype theme ended up getting the boot, a whole bunch of files still remain from back then. Namely, the shiny coins, the shiny bricks, the shiny question mark blocks, plus a few other sprites which never made it into the game. There's a whole lot of glitz hanging out in the game's files. However, that's just the tip of the iceberg of what's hidden inside Mario Maker's files. There's some much weirder stuff going on here. Now, if you owned a 3DS back in the early days of the system, like 2011 to 2013, you'll fondly remember the application swap note. If not, this was an app which let you send little hand-drawn notes to your friends online, plus strangers nearby to you. And featured in this app was the character Nikki. Nikki would guide you through the swap note process, teaching you the ins and outs of the application. However, less than two years after it was created, swap note was quickly killed off by Nintendo. Their reason? Well, some pretty dark news came out about child predators making use of the Swapnote application to send inappropriate messages to minors in Japan. Needless to say, Nintendo rightly shut down the Swapnote service as soon as this story was published. However, the character of Nikki remained popular, including amongst Nintendo's Wii U development teams. And so, whenever these teams needed a test image, they would often use one particular picture. This. This image has appeared in the files of all sorts of Wii U software, including one game in particular, Super Mario Maker. It's not known exactly what purpose this image had, probably just as a placeholder image before the actual graphics were drawn up. But strangely enough, this drawing of Nikki is actually loaded into the game when you first enter CoreSpot. I mean, it's never actually shown to the player, but then why is it loaded into the game's memory? Weird, huh? But it gets even weirder. Twitter user NWPlayer123 made a startling discovery. Inside Mario Maker's files are almost 100 different clothing items and weapons from Splatoon. Not the final version, mind you, they're actually from an early version of the game. In fact, this finding offers a great opportunity to see the origins of some of the now classic weapons from the game. The Burst Bomb, for example, was going to be green rather than the sludgy purple of the final game. The Splat Bomb, again, was going to be a neon green rather than the off-white that the developers eventually decided on. Some of the weapons went through much larger changes, though. The Bubbler originally looked like, well, a bubble. 
the squid beacon was going to be a flag rather than a satellite dish. And the disruptor looks like this, as opposed to its final form. That's not a bowling ball, like I originally thought. It's actually closer to what a real tranquilizer bomb looks like. Plus, as I mentioned, there's also an absolute ton of clothing from the game. This, again, seems to be from an earlier version of Splatoon. Going by volume alone, there are 11 tops here, compared to the nearly 100 in the final release. So what the heck was all this doing in the game's code? Well, that's a good question, and one Nintendo themselves will almost certainly never reveal. However, we can do some theorising. First off, let's look at each game's release date. Well, Splatoon was released in May 2015. Mario Maker? That came out September 2015. Interesting. That confirms that the games would have been in development at the same time. What about the developers behind each of these games? Well, they were both designed within Nintendo, but that's not much help. Splatoon was developed by Nintendo EAD Group 2, headed up by producer Hisashi Nogami. Super Mario Maker, on the other hand, was developed by a completely different team, Nintendo EAD Group 4, under the leadership of producer Hiroyuki Kimura. As much as I wish these two people were the same for simplicity's sake, they are most definitely not. So that's a bust. If the games weren't made by the same team, then what possible reason is there for this strange occurrence? Well, at this point, it's really only vague theories. The most common conclusion I can find is that perhaps Mario Maker used an early version of Splatoon as a sort of base. That way, the developers of Mario Maker wouldn't have to rewrite a bunch of simple, non-game specific code. However, that still seems a little fishy. Firstly, the kind of files found inside Mario Maker look pretty complete, which suggests they were from a relatively late version of the game. That doesn't really line up with the timeline that we know of for Splatoon's development. If you've seen my video on the history of Splatoon, you'll know that a large part of early development was spent making and revising simple prototypes. These files don't seem to match that at all, they look almost finished. So maybe Mario Maker was based on a later version of Splatoon. Sure, the files would match up more closely, but why would the developers of Mario Maker even want to base their game on Splatoon at this point? It's pretty well known that Mario Maker, or at least the first game, uses almost entirely sprites. Even in the New Super Mario Bros. U theme, all the blocks, all the enemies, they're all 2D, flat sprites. The only 3D model used is Mario himself. So why would Mario Maker's developers want to base their game on a well-developed, at this point, 3D third-person shooter? It just doesn't make sense. Plus, we should know this. If you've seen my video on the history of Mario Maker, you'll know that the game was originally developed quite a while before the Wii U even existed. Perhaps the team rewrote the game's code from scratch when developing the Wii U version, but that seems kind of weird. As I say, this is all just speculation. I don't know enough to be making concrete claims about the origins of these files. As I said at the start of the video, I know how to research, not how to develop games. And so, I hate to leave this video on an unanswered question, but it seems like that's what I'll have to do. I did try to look into it further, but people keep deleting their tweets, which makes my life very hard. If you know more about the topic, please, please get in touch. I'd love to hear your thoughts, even concrete knowledge if you have it. You can reach out in the comments or find me on Twitter. For everyone else who does not have an answer, that includes me, all is not over. If you haven't seen it already, my last video talks about the origins of this game, minus the potential Splatoon bit. Here's a taster. Mario Maker wasn't originally even going to be a game. Ooh, interesting. Doesn't that make you want to watch the video and support me and make me happy? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Oh, but I do have a couple more Mario Maker insights that I'd love to share, but it really depends on the reaction to my other Mario Maker videos. Gotta ride the content wave, folks. So yeah, I will see you next week, whether talking about Mario Maker or something completely different. If you don't want to miss out, be sure to subscribe, and if you really love me, ring the notification bell. Okay, see you next week, bye!